Hi everyone, my name is Cynthia. Let's talk books. Today I'm here with a dedicated review of a fantastic book that I got to read early. Um, I received a free ER from NetGalley from the publisher. When they reached out to me and offered the art, I was just ecstatic because this book is already on my radar and I am, was dying to read it. The book is Our Share of the Night by Mariana Enriquez newly translated in English by Megan McDowell. So this book was first published in Spanish and I have seen a lot of writers really rave about this book. And whenever writers I admire rave about a book, I immediately pay attention. And uh, this book did not disappoint me. Uh, you start off, the book starts off with a father and son on a road trip in Argentina. And right off the bat, you get a sense of Enriquez's writing and like the work that the translator did because it's really clear that there's a lot of things going on below the surface, right? That something, there's more here to the story of this father and the son. The father is deeply afraid of something. He's staying off um, kind of main roads and kind of traveling incognito. And then the son begins seeing things. And the father is very worried about this, but you don't know everything yet. And so slowly we just follow this father-son on this road trip, the story mainly being told from the perspective of the father, Juan. Then the story shifts. We do learn more in that section of the book. The story shifts for, uh, and is told from the point of view of the son, Gas. Bar. Then it shifts a couple more times and you end up essentially with, uh, with half the story being told from the father's perspective and half being told from the son's perspective. The reason I love this book, uh, it's a horror story and but it's a deeply like psychological horror story with plenty of gore, don't get me wrong. Uh, but I loved all those psychological aspects and I loved just so much here. So let me start with the setting. I love the setting. It's set in Argentina during the dictatorship and dirty wars. Um, during this period in, our, in Argentinian history, basically any dissidents, anybody who spoke out against the regime uh, was basically disappeared, what is called disappeared. They were typically tortured and murdered by the regime. And literally thousands of people just disappeared. Their bodies were never found. Their families never got closure. It's just, it, it was just a reality. So that is part of the setting here. The, the book actually will take us back and forth in time a little bit um, through each of the perspectives, but um, th that setting is what stands out the most because so much of it is told from, during in the middle of this dictatorship, which is preventing the move of people, and it's also allowing a cult to operate and make uh, do things with humans that might stand out in a different kind of setting and during peacetime, during a dictatorship when people are disappearing because of government actions, it's much easier for this cult to function in certain ways. So that's the other aspect of this book. You're, you're really getting an inside look at this particular cult called The Order, a really ancient cult. I believe it's completely fiction, but aspects of it are probably based on some um, realities. But the cult goes back to uh, British history and the the family we follow kind of traces its roots back to um, in British history as one of the founders, one of the founding families of this cult. They've moved to Argentina. They're incredibly wealthy and they credit their wealth and success to the worship of a darkness, a kind of God, uh, a cult kind of God. And um, and we get an inside look at this cult through, um, through members of this family. One, because Juan, the father we start the story off with, is an integral part of this uh, uh, cult worshipping, uh, but also he marries the daughter of one of the cult leaders and she, um, when we do get a, ch a section in the book through her point of view and, and she just like, what Enrique, Enriquez does brilliantly is she takes this cult seriously. Like this 
darkness they worship exists. The things they believe in are basically real. And so it makes the actions of, of these people like have their own kind of logic. Even if you don't believe, the story takes for granted that this is real because it's real for them, whether it's real or not. Um, and it adds that element of fear and terror throughout the story because it feels very much like a real thing. Uh, the other thing the story does really well is, I think, show us trauma. This cult has created an intense amount of trauma in Juan, in Gaspar, in um, Gaspar's mom, in a bunch of different ways. But the trauma, when we see it, is primarily through the eyes of children and some of these people as during their childhood and how this cult really changes the lives of individuals from from the point of childhood and that adds an extra uh, horror element because you're seeing not just adults participate in a cult but young children and seeing what cult mentality does to fathers and mothers when they value the cult and those beliefs so much more than they value their own children. Um, it's horrific, absolutely horrific. So it's plenty of content warnings here for extreme violence, abuse of children, sexual assault, uh, gore, all kinds of different types of violence. Um, <clears throat> There's so much here. Um, the pace is not going to be for everybody. It's a really long book. It actually took me like two months um, to get through the book. I did stop during the holidays because I honestly didn't feel like reading something so heavy. <laughs> um, while I was spending time with my family, I wanted to think lighter things. And so I had started reading it in December and then I paused and then um, continued reading it after the holidays. And um, it, it's, it can take a while to read, even though I... I don't think of myself as a fast reader, but, you know, I guess there is a kind of uh, a speed to my reading, I think, that <laughs> maybe not everybody has. Uh, so it's slow paced. There are large chunks in the book in which people are waiting or they're observing or they're going about, about their daily lives. But you need those. You need that element of like slowness in order for those moments of action to have the impact that they do plus it was also this is how you get to see what daily life for for, for people can be and how normal <laughs> kind of uh, cult life can be in certain senses but also you know the abnormality of it um, there are there were some issues with the translation there were parts where I felt like I could sense the translation and I think really great translation translations you don't sense you don't see the translators work necessarily maybe some of this for me is because I know Spanish and so I can see some of the tricky translations that where you see the obvious hand of the translator there um, so I have purchased the book in Spanish and I do plan on reading this book in Spanish eventually and I actually want to gift it to my mom because my mom likes these kinds of themes <laughs> And also, hopefully what comes through is like, when I really love a book, I get really excited and I need other people to read it. Um, so if you've read this book, please let me know and we can have a chat about some of the different aspects um, of this here. For example, there's a section, a very small section told from the point of view of a reporter. Um, it, it, it felt really odd. It was a really odd section, but, but... It's like you have to just trust that Enrique knows what she's doing and that this is going to be important in some way. Um, and, and there are things that like work laid out early on that at first seems like, okay, like why do you have this on here? It's just adding to the slow pace. But there's a payoff to them. Um, and so I love to talk to people about, uh, about some of that, um, about what we think, um, yeah, but in the future, like the story ends in such a way that is absolutely fulfilling, but also makes you imagine what happens afterwards. And um, and I wonder what people who have read um, who have read that ending uh, think. Um, I I highly recommend it if you're into horror, if you can handle the themes. 
um, and you know are in the mental space where you can handle a really long slow pace horror story uh, it's excellent it's just really really fantastic but I think it really is not going to be for every reader I think you've got to be into a few of these elements uh, in order for it to be worth it to you um, also in addition anybody who's read both the English and the Spanish translation let me know what you thought about the translation I haven't yet read the Spanish um, edition so I'm, I'm really wondering uh, how that is going to be different uh, typically I, I find that that the Spanish versions, things that were written originally in Spanish end up having a bigger effect on me because I am a native Spanish speaker. Uh, but oftentimes it's just easier to get the English edition. Um, so anyways, I want to hear all those thoughts. Let me know if you're interested in this book or if it's also just a pass for you. Sounds like too much, which is completely acceptable. <laughs> uh, but thank you so much for watching this review and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.